Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It is Tuesday, um, October 27th. I can't believe I just said that. We are nearing the end of October already. It has gone by like a flash. And um, in a lot of ways, that's not a, not a horrible thing um, because it means that day by day, in each day that draws, uh, draws to a close means that we're one day closer to seeing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we get going this morning, I just want to say, first off, we apologize for the lateness of the video being uploaded yesterday. We don't know what was going on with Facebook or YouTube, um, but the bottom line is we uploaded it about 10 o'clock and lo and behold, it was well into the afternoon, evening before it finished loading. So I'm not sure what was going on uh, with them. Hopefully that doesn't happen today, but again, we apologize for the delay. But this morning, we're going we're gonna to look at Psalm 35. Yesterday we looked at Mark cha or Matthew chapter six, that, where Jesus tells us, "Don't be anxious. What, what good does it do to be anxious? What what good is it? What, what what do we add to our lives by being anxious?" And the answer is absolutely nothing. We add absolutely nothing to our lives. But this morning I want to take a, a step back into the Old Testament, look at the book of Psalms, uh, chapter thirty-seven. We're going to look at verses three through five this morning. These are great verses. Um, and what's interesting is we're going to note the the beginning word of each verse. Uh, it's kind of neat the way the psalmist wrote this out and, and the way that God put it into the word of God for us to have this morning. But he says in verse three, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. These are great verses for the believer to remember. These are great verses for us to, to tie onto our hearts and just remember. But if we, if we looked, what, what the psalmist says is trust, delight, and commit. Trust, delight, and commit. Trust in what? Trust in the Lord. You see, that's, uh, that's what we said yesterday. If we're anxious, then doesn't that show that we really don't trust him that much? If we're worrying about what's going to happen or what the future holds or what the days are going to look like, then, then really what we're saying is I don't really trust God enough to be able to hold my future in his hands and that his will is perfect and good. So the psalmist here says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. That should be the foundational element to each day of our lives is that we trust in the Lord. We trust in God. We trust in what his word says. We trust that what he says for us is true. What he says about us is true. What he says about himself is true. He is completely trustworthy. But coupled with trusting God, the psalmist also adds, and do good. Not only do we have to trust God, but we have to act in accordance with our faith in God. We need to do what is good, what is right, what is honorable in the sight of the Lord. We need to dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. You see, what, what God wants us to do is not just trust him, but to abide in him, to reside in him, to stay there, befriend the faithfulness of God and being faithful in our own lives. And all that stems from trusting God. You see, all of these things that we're going to look at this morning stem from trusting God. Because if we trust God, then the next thing that he says in verse 4 is that we delight in God. That we delight in the Lord. So if we trust the Lord, we do good by the Lord, we befriend faithfulness from the Lord and to the Lord, then here's the thing then we can delight ourselves in God. I love that phrase, delight yourself in the Lord. You see, there are a lot of things in this life that bring delight, that bring us joy, that bring us happiness. Um, like this morning, I, I woke up and I went to uh, went outside and, and I mean, we have winter stars out now and it was cold, but just the, the vastness of the, 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 the sky with all of its stars. And I just thought, you know what, God, thank you so much for the the beauty that you have put before us. Just simple things that bring us happiness. And if we're trusting in, in the Lord, then what happens is, is those things that we that we find that bring us joy and happiness, they, they ultimately come from the Lord. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, according to James. And if that's the case, then we can delight ourselves. We can take joy and ha find happiness in our relationship with God. We delight ourselves in the Lord. And, and catch this. When we trust God, we do what is right by God, we delight ourselves in the Lord, then shouldn't our hearts align ourselves with what he wants? Shouldn't our, our lives align themselves with, 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 with his will? Shouldn't we as Christians have the desires that God desires for us? You see, the thing is when we trust God and we delight in God, then we want what God wants. And the psalmist says, he will give us the desires of our hearts. 
Now, I just wanna say this, that doesn't mean necessarily you're gonna get an iPad or a Ferrari or, or a new iPhone 12. You know, that's not, that's not what he's saying at all. What he's saying is that if we desire God and we love God, then God is gonna fulfill himself in us. That's what I believe the scripture's talking about here. That when we want to know God and we want to serve God and we want to be like God, then God is gonna grant us those desires when we trust in the Lord when we delight ourselves in the Lord. You see, but there's this other element that the psalmist brings in in verse five. He says, commit yourselves. Commit yourselves, commit your way to the Lord. So he says, you have to trust in the Lord, you have to delight in the Lord, and then you have to make the purpose, uh, purposeful and clear commitment to do what God wants us to do, to do what he has called us to do, to do the things that please him. You see, what I love about, even go back to what we read about in Daniel and, and that idea of, of not, not being willing to, to wander from the truth of God, from the laws of God, from the commands of God. Daniel says, look, I won't eat the king's food. So be it if that ends my life. But I believe that if we follow God, he's going to take care of us. And so he committed himself to the way of the Lord. And what happened was, is that God acted on his behalf. God actually gave them an increase in health by eating and following the dietary guidelines under the law of Moses. You see, when we commit our way to the Lord, when we do what God wants us to do, and we say, you know what, God, forget about what I want. Forget about what my sinful carnal passions are. Forget about the things that I think are important. God, I'm going to commit my way to you. God, I'm going to lay down my life and lay it at your feet and say, God, not what I want, but what you want. The same way that Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, I know that this is not what I want to do, but God, not my will, but yours be done. He says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. There's that thing again. Committing our ways to the Lord, committing our lives to God means that we trust him with them. Like we talked about yesterday. That means we don't pull it back. We don't, we don't worry. We don't fret. We say, you know, God, I'm committing to what you've called me to do. I'm committing to what it is that you want for me. And therefore, as a result, I am going to trust you more. I am going to live for you more. I am going to do the things that please you. And catch what he says here. And he will act. When we trust, when we delight, and we commit to the Lord, God moves. God works. God does what God does in our lives. And not just in our lives, he then works outward through us to reach and impact the lives of others, to encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ, to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ, to, to go and do what God wants us to do. He acts in and through us as he does his will, not only in us, through us, but in the lives of others as well. We serve a good God and he is worthy of our trust. He is worthy of our delight and he is worthy of us committing to him. We hope you guys find that encouraging today. We challenge you to spend some more time in the word if you have time. And, and even if you don't, just try to make some time. If you guys are interested in joining us for a Wednesday evening or a Bible study or a Sunday morning service, there's all that information available on our website, www.nipiganbaptist.com. You can check it out or you can click the link below. And we would love to have you join us. We would love to have you reach out to us and uh, even like and share these messages so that we can encourage as many people as possible. Thank you guys for tuning in. We hope you guys have a great rest of your day. God bless.